Maybe you never heard of the term bandwagon, but when we talk about someone jumping on the bandwagon, it refers back to the old days when bands used to ride in fancy wagons in parades. And of course, everybody got excited about that and wanted to jump on the bandwagon. And you see that today with people getting excited about various causes, projects, parties, whatever, and they jump on that bandwagon really fast. Well, when it comes to remyelination research, I would have to say we've gone past the bandwagon stage. It's a full-fledged orchestra now. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. My name is Pam and I've been living with MS for almost 40 years. I've been doing a lot of articles on remyelination and I keep telling you, okay, I'm going to quit for a while. But then I went on vacation and when I came back, I saw some articles in my inbox that I thought, oh no, I have to share these with you. The first one we'll look at is from Multiple Sclerosis News Today, talking about some money that the National MS Society has granted to five different researchers who are studying remyelination. Let's find out more. From Multiple Sclerosis News Today, National MS Society awards $4.6 million to five projects on repairing myelin. Researchers' work ultimately aims to restore lost function in multiple sclerosis patients. And this just came out on October 16, 2024. And they say that the Nas National Multiple Sclerosis Society is awarding a total of $4.6 million in funding to advance research into how the protective myelin sheath that's damaged in multiple sclerosis can be repaired, a step toward developing new treatments for the disease. Five research projects have been chosen for funding, four in the U.S. and one in Spain. Each aims to better understand how to repair myelin and protect nerve cells or to develop tools to improve preclinical and clinical studies in these areas. The ultimate goal is to help MS patients recover lost function, motor as well as cognitive and targeting impaired vision and pain and fatigue. Wow, one thing to do it all. These projects may accelerate our ability to develop new treatments that restore function in people living with MS. Bruce F. Bebo, Ph.D., Executive Vice President of Research at the National MS Society, said in a press release from the nonprofit announcing the awards. The funding aligns with the goals of a broader initiative from the National MS Society known as the Pathways to Cures Research Roadmap. That recently updated strategic framework was developed to identify and address gaps in current MS research. Among the three identified areas of research, these funded projects are particularly focused on the pathway of restoring lost function. National MS Society funding aligns with its Pathways to Cures roadmap. MS is caused by a misguided immune system inflammatory attack that's launched against the myelin sheath which protects nerve fibers and is key for transmitting nerve signals efficiently. The resulting loss of myelin, called demyelination, impairs nerve cell communication and ultimately leads to a range of MS symptoms, such as fatigue, numbness, and tingling, pain, vision problems, and walking impairments. One way to treat MS could be to restore lost function by repairing myelin, a process called remyelination. Still, while many therapies are now approved for MS, none has been able to achieve this. Although we've made progress in studying myelin repair using animal models, we haven't yet been able to successfully translate these findings to clinical trials, Bebo said, noting that additional approaches are needed. To better understand remyelination, Meredith Hartley, Ph.D., and her team at the University of Kansas are taking on a project to investigate the role of cholesterol, a component of myelin. And I couldn't get a video on Meredith Hartley, but I did find a photo of her, so here it is. Many proteins are involved in how cholesterol forms and breaks down. 
The researchers will block or use genetic engineering to, to delete these proteins and then check whether they could be targeted to boost cholesterol recycling, therefore promote remyelination. In the future, therapies could be developed against these targets and provide a novel way to restore loss function in people with MS, the team wrote in the project's abstract. And yeah, that's a new approach. I hadn't heard of anyone using cholesterol in that way. Another funded project by Jeffrey Huang, Ph.D. of Georgetown University, will test whether blocking a transporter of amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, can ease the chronic inflammation in the brain that's believed to prevent normal remyelination processes from taking place. And I have a short video that I found from Dr. Huang. If you've ever been drilled by a football or knocked off your feet and face planted into the ground, you know how much it hurts. Damage to the brain from injuries can result in massive damage to the most important part of the human body and can impair movement and basic functions. Yet, the human body is extraordinarily capable. In most mild cases, the brain is able to heal and repair itself over time, given the right conditions. While we may often think of traumatic brain injuries like concussions or stroke, diseases like multiple sclerosis can damage nerve cells through uncontrolled inflammation in the brain. To understand this process, I'll take you into my lab where we're studying MS and developing a new drug that could kickstart the regenerative processes in the brains of patients with significant neurological injuries and diseases. Nerve cells use axons to communicate between each other. These axons are like long cables, several times thinner than a single strand of human hair. Wrapped around these axons is a substance called myelin, which speeds up communication between nerve cells and protect the axons. Think of this network as similar to the deep sea cables that run across the world's oceans and connect everyone to the internet. And when something damages these axons or the myelin around them, the entire network is disrupted. In mild brain injuries, inflammatory cells called microglia clean up cellular debris and can stimulate the regeneration of myelin so the brain can go back to normal. In the case of MS, a patient's immune system will see myelin as a foreign invader and will try to destroy it. This demyelinating process happens because patients with MS tend to have malfunctioning microglia, the cells that clean up the mess after brain injuries. Rather than mopping up cellular debris, microglia in MS patients transform and become toxic in the brain, destroying myelin and nerve cells in the vicinity, kind of like how Dr. Bruce Banner transforms into the Incredible Hulk and starts smashing everything in its sight. What this means is that a body's immune system doesn't function properly and actually targets the body by mistake. My lab at Georgetown University is currently working on a method to fix this, to turn the Incredible Hulk's rampaging into Dr. Bruce Banner. Unlike existing treatments that target immune cells in a patient's bloodstream, our therapy targets the microglia in the brain, so the cells can regenerate myelin again. This shows great promise in not only treating MS, but also enabling us to potentially repair other brain injuries. We know that microglia can behave abnormally. Left untreated, this could lead to worse clinical outcome for the patients. We're hopeful that our drug will pave the way to repair myelin and nerve cell damage in MS, as well as other forms of brain and spinal cord injuries. At Johns Hopkins University, Michael Kornberg, MD, PhD, will explore changes in fat metabolism that may affect the myelin repair abilities of myelin producing cells. According to Kornberg's team, their work has the potential to identify new treatments to promote myelin repair, which is a critical unmet need for people living with MS. And I have a photo of him that I will show you. And then for her part, Isabel Perez Otaño, PhD at the Alicante Neuroscience Institute in Spain, will focus on a brain protein that may help to activate these cells. Perez Otaño and colleagues will be testing their theories in mice. And here is a picture of Dr. Perez Otaño. And finally, Paul Tassar, Ph.D. at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, will investigate how astrocytes, star-shaped cells that support the, the survival of nerve cells, 
become overly active and contribute to damage in MF. The team will test a class of compounds that prevent the toxic activation of astrocytes. Stopping these toxic astrocytes from forming may protect nerve cells, potentially halting or even reversing the disability progression that occurs in people with MS, the researchers wrote in their project abstract. And here is a picture of Dr. Chessar. I could not find any videos, but I always think it's nice when we can see what people look like and even better when we can hear them talk about their work. It just makes more of a connection and it makes it feel more real. At least it does to me. And then I wanted to talk about another article I saw, which is actually sort of a follow-on. I did a video about this, which I'll link below, some time back. And I was actually looking for something else at the time. I was interested in the vagus nerve and the effect that MS might have on it. And then found that there's research that's going on about stimulating the vagus nerve to help with remyelination. Well, their research has progressed, and so I wanted you to know more about it. So here it is. The article is called Nerve Stimulator for Myelin Repair to Enter Relapsing MS Clinical Trial. Set point device stimulating the vagus nerve could be tested in patients next year. And this came out on October 8th of 2024. Set point Medical is planning to launch a clinical trial next year to investigate its nerve stimulator device intending to support myelin repair in people with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. The announcement comes after Food and Drug Administration approval of an investigational device exemption, allowing the company to initiate clinical studies to collect safety and efficacy data on the device and its use. Set point reported in a company press release. And in my prior video, I talked about this exact thing. And we talked about the importance of the safety and efficacy and how, because it's been used on other things, we kind of get a fast track on MS because they've already done safety and efficacy for the other conditions that they were examining. It also follows a phase three trial, as they say, of the device in people with rheumatoid arthritis another autoimmune disease marked by damaging inflammation that found clinical benefit with reasonable safety. Aiming to enroll up to 60 relapsing remitting MS patients at multiple sites in the U.S., the upcoming trial will randomly assign participants to treatment with the device or to a sham procedure. Assignment will be blinded, meaning neither patients nor their treating physicians will know who is receiving which procedure. And they say that the neural stimulator might repair myelin sheath, an unmet need for MS patients. You can say that again. The device, which is believed to slow damage to the myelin sheath and promote its repair, an unmet need in demyelinating conditions such as multiple sclerosis, previously was designated a breakthrough device by the FDA in treating relapsing MS. We look forward to initiating this pilot study to advance SetPoint's platform in another therapeutic area, said David Chernoff, chief medical officer at SetPoint. MS is due to inflammation in the brain and spinal cord that damages and destroys the myelin sheath a fatty covering around nerve fibers that's necessary for healthy nerve cell communication. This loss of myelin or demyelination results in a range of disease symptoms from pain and fatigue to motor impairment and cognitive issues. About 20 disease-modifying therapies are re approved for relapsing forms of MS, which are marked by periods of MS flares during which symptoms suddenly worsen followed by periods of remission in which symptoms ease. But the therapies all focus on modulating or suppressing the immune system to prevent or slow myelin damage. No approved therapy to date can repair the damage that has accrued. Small device implanted in patient's neck to allow for daily nerve stimulation. Set points device, the company reports, is designed to promote myelin repair 
remyelination by electrically stimulating the vagus nerve. This nerve, the longest in the body, runs from the brain to multiple organs to control essential functions like breathing, heart rate, and digestion. The vagus nerve also can detect and respond to inflammatory signals, activating the inflammatory reflex pathway to dial down excessive inflammation and restore immune balance. Company researchers report having identified the specific nerve fibers involved in this pathway and the stimulation parameters needed to activate it. Biomarker analysis set point states on a web page also indicate that a single stimulation of the vagus nerve can control inflammation for more than 24 hours. The rechargeable device is said to be about the size of an oral capsule and designed to be implanted in the neck close to the vagus nerve in an outpatient surgical procedure. Once implanted, it will be programmed to directly stimulate that nerve once a day. Research in rat models of MS showed that vagus nerve stimulation significantly reduced immune cell activation in demyelinated regions and improved myelin repair, although best results in these animals were seen with continuous stimulation. Top-line results of Phase three trial in rheumatoid arthritis show benefit. The results from our studies in validated preclinical models of MS suggest that the set-point system has the potential to address the urgent unmet medical need for novel therapies that reduce demyelination and promote remyelination, providing new hope for people living with MS, Chernoff said. Earlier this year, the FDA brought Setpoint and its neurostimulator into its pilot Total Product Lifecycle Advisory Program, which aims to speed patient access to innovative devices by allowing more frequent communication with the regulatory agency. Setpoint also recently announced positive top-line results from the Reset RA Phase 3 study, and there's the number, testing the safety and efficacy of its implanted device in people with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Patients were treated with vagus nerve stimulation for one minute each day for 12 weeks. You know, if it would help with rheumatoid arthritis, that would be another tremendous blessing because I have had friends who've suffered with rheumatoid arthritis and it kills. So I would love to see this get adopted for people with rheumatoid arthritis. And if it helps us with MS, so much the better. Let's hear from Yakov Levine, who is the Vice President of Research for Setpoint. The 20 or so drugs that are designated as disease modifying in MS uh, work well at preventing relapse of disease and slowing down the rate of progression. And they do this mainly by immunosuppression. So the fewer, if they can keep the immune cells out of the CNS, uh, they could prevent flares. If they could turn down inflammation in the brain, uh, then they could reverse the flares through, through the natural mechanism of, of uh, resolution. Um, however, immunosuppression comes with a price, um, as well as um, not, not just uh, a monetary price. And all of these drugs are extremely expensive on the order of $100,000 per year. Um, but they also have uh, some side effects. So common, less serious side effects are injection site or infusion reactions, nausea, diarrhea, and hair loss, but also more serious effects like hepatotoxicity and cardiomyopathy. There are also dangerous known risks to related to immunosuppression, like infections, PML, secondary leukemia, and risks for thyroid, breast, and skin cancers. Now, vagus nerve stimulation is a known, is a common treatment for drug resistant epilepsy and depression. As of 2022, there are over 125,000 patients implanted with vagus nerve stimulators uh, for the last 25 years. Um, now, these side, the side effects uh, of the implant, of the implantation and treatment are all well known. Um, and they center really around the time of surgery itself. Um, once you get past two weeks outside of surgery, uh, the um, 
the um, the side effects are limited to during the stimulation itself, the major side effect being a contraction of laryngeal muscle causing some discomfort and difficulty swallowing during the time that, that the, the stimulation occurs. In epilepsy and depression, uh, vagus nerve stimulation is typically uh, given 30 seconds on, 90, 30 seconds on, five minutes off around the clock. For chronic inflammatory disease, our data indicates that we would need to stimulate the patients only for minutes per day. So it's an order of magnitude lower than what's, than what's in clinical use currently uh, for epilepsy and depression. So as I mentioned, uh, these drugs are, are disease modifying and they can uh, decrease rates of relapse and slow the, down the rate of progression. But what none of the drugs uh, can do or have been shown to do is increase the rate of remyelination or to reverse uh, the progressive damage that has occurred. Pro-remyelination therapies is currently the holy grail of MS research. Preclinical data with vagus nerve stimulation in animal models uh, have indicated that there is a real potential for increasing the rate of remyelination and potentially reversal of some damage that has occurred. So this may be a unique effect of stimulating these neuroimmune pathways. It's all pretty amazing stuff, I have to say. What I like about the fact that there's so many people involved in this research is that even though they're all going in different directions, they all have the same goal. And if more than one of them actually discovers the secret, we are going to be able to have some choices, which is a good thing, right? We might have choices in terms of side effects or cost or availability, whatever it might be. It can't but help us to have choices in this matter because taking any medication, of course, is something we have to think about very seriously. But this is exciting stuff, and I guess I will keep you posted. I'm no longer going to say that I'm done talking about remyelination. But that's all I have for today. So in the meantime, until my next video, please do take really good care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.